Is there something you could say, just on a small tangent, about really impressive AI from a game design, human enjoyment perspective, really impressive AI that you've seen in games? And maybe what does it take to create an AI system? And how hard of a problem is that? So a million questions yeah. with, with just as a brief tangent. Well, look, I think um, games uh, games have been significant in my life for three reasons. So first of all, to to I was playing them and training myself on games when I was a kid. Then uh, I went through a phase of designing games and writing AI for games. So all the games I, I professionally wrote uh, had AI as a core component. And that was mostly in the, in the nineties. And, um, the reason I was doing that in games industry was at the time, the games industry, I think was the cutting edge of technology. So whether it was graphics with people like John Carmack and Quake and those kind of things, or, or AI, I think, uh, actually all the action was going on in games and, and we seen, we're still reaping the benefits of that, even with things like GPUs which uh, you know, I find ironic, was obviously invented for graphics, computer graphics, but then turns out to be amazingly useful for AI. It just turns out everything's a matrix multiplication, it appears, yes. you know, in the, in the whole world. Yes. So, um, so I think games at the time had the most cutting edge AI, and a lot of the, the, the games, uh, uh, we, we, you know, I was involved in writing, so there was a game called Black and White, which was one game I was involved with in the early stages of, which I still think is the most um, impressive uh, example of reinforcement learning in a computer game. Game. So in that game, you know, you trained a little pet animal, uh, and it's a brilliant uh, game. Yeah, and it sort of learned from how you were treating it. So if yeah. you treated it badly, then it became mean, yeah. and then it would be mean to to your villagers and your and your population, the sort of uh, the little tribe that you were running. Uh, but if you were kind to it, then it would be kind. And people were fascinated by how that worked, and and so was I, to be honest, with the way it kind of developed, and um, especially the mapping to good and evil. Yeah, it made you made you realize, made me realize that you can sort of in the way in the choices you make can define uh, the, the where you end up, and that means all of us are capable of the good, uh, evil. It all matters in uh, the different choices along the trajectory to those places that you make. It's fascinating. I mean, games can do that philosophically to you, and it's rare. It seems rare. Yeah. Well, games are, I think, a unique medium because um, you, as the player, you're not just passively consuming the 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 entertainment, right? You're you're actually actively involved as an as a as an agent. So I think that's what makes it, in some ways, can be more visceral than other uh, other mediums like you know films and books. So the second, so that was you know designing AI in games, and then the third use. Uh, 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 I've, we've used of AI is in DeepMind from the beginning, which is using games as a testing ground for proving out AI algorithms and developing AI algorithms. And that was a that was a sort of um, a core component of our vision at the start of DeepMind was that we would use games very heavily uh, as our main testing ground, certainly to begin with, um, because it's super efficient to use games. Uh, and also, you know, it's very easy to have metrics to see how well your systems are improving and what direction your ideas are going in and whether you're making incremental improvements. And because those games are often rooted in something that humans did for a long time beforehand, there's already a strong set of rules. Like it's already a damn good benchmark. Yes, it's really good for so many reasons because you've got you've got you've got clear measures of how good humans can be at yes. these things. That's right. And in some cases, like Go, we've been playing it for thousands of years. Yeah. Um, and and uh, often they have scores or at least win conditions. So it's very easy for reward learning systems to get a reward. It's very easy to specify what that reward is. Um, and uh, also at the end, it's easy to, you know, to test uh, externally, you know, uh, how strong is your system by, of course, playing against, you know, the world's strongest players at those games. So it's it's so good for so many reasons. And it's also very efficient to run potentially millions of simulations in parallel on the cloud. So um, I think there's a huge reason why we were so successful uh, back in, you know, starting out 2010, how come we were able to progress so quickly because we'd utilize games. And, um, you know, at the beginning of DeepMind, we also hired some amazing game engineers uh, who I knew from my previous uh, lives in, in the games industry. And, uh, and that helped to bootstrap us very quickly. And plus it's somehow super compelling, almost at a philosophical level of man versus machine. Uh, over over a chessboard or a go board, and especially given that the entire history of AI is defined by people saying it's going to be impossible to make a machine that beats a human being in chess, yeah. and then once that happened, people were certain 
when I was coming up in AI, that Go is not a game that could be solved because of the combinatorial complexity. It's just too, it's, 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 you know, no matter how much Moore's Law you have, compute is just never going to be able to crack the game of Go. Yeah. And so the, the, then there's something compelling about facing, sort of taking on the imp impossibility of that task from the AI pers researcher perspective, engineer perspective, and then as a human being, just observing this whole thing, um, your beliefs about what you thought was impossible being broken apart, you st it's, it's uh, humbling to realize we're not as smart as we thought. It's humbling to realize that the things we think are impossible now perhaps will be done in, in, the, in the future. There's something really uh, powerful about a game, AI system beating a human being in a game that drives that message uh, home for like millions, billions of people, hmm. especially in the case of Go.